Good afternoon, all you little stumpsters. Tis I, the fairy one. Hey, uh, I gotta tell you a story. My latest foobah. Stupid. I'm telling you, stuff that happens. Just you couldn't, you couldn't write a script. I mean, you just couldn't. It's amazing. Um. Good news from the insurance company, by the way, on the on the crispy critter. It's gonna work out pretty good. I'll when everything's the dust settles, I'll tell you about it. Uh, can't get into that right now, obviously. I think for legal reasons, but whatever. Um. Anyway. Um. But it was good news. Um. Very. I'm glad I had it insured it that way. <laughs> um. But check this out. You ain't gonna believe this one. Alright, I have two portable welders. And right now, right now the Dodge truck, I gotta do it, I got a tranny for it. I got the heavier duty tranny. Because that get rag piece of junk. I've done it twice, I'm not gonna do it anymore. So we got a South Bend clutch, no transfer case in it, and anyway, the tranny's junk. So um, instead, of, instead of getting another rebuild, get rag, whatever they call them, junks. I got, I bought one, the heavier duty one, a couple of years ago, a year and a half or so, but I never put it in. So I gotta get the conversion kit for it. We're gonna put the heavier, whatever it is, the upgraded, better cast iron, heavy duty training for the one ton. But anyway, it's, it's down and out right now. So I got a Hobart welder in that one. And I have, well, I should say, I had a nice little Lincoln, um, Lincoln Electric, the little red one. I don't know, I can't remember what it is. The model number, I'll get it. But um, it's got the two-cylinder Kohler, uh, little V, V engine in it, two-cylinder Kohler, and uh, it's a good, it's a good welder. I've had it for probably ten years. <laughs> And uh, so that's kind of my spare. So we threw that in the back of the other, the GMC service truck the other day. And because uh, we just wanted to have a welder handy. And uh, we used it for something I can't remember. And um, <laughs> anyway, it was sitting in the back of the truck. Well, <clears throat> I noticed a crack in the dozer blade the other day. So uh, the one that Marv fixed, the, the one upright post. I guess somebody got a log caught in it or something and popped the weld on it. So before it got too bad, I wanted to put it back together. And so I bent it back. I tapped it back together with the loader, with the shovel, and got it in in the right position. And I pull it over to the truck. I was waiting on wood anyway, and I pull it over to the truck. And I was going to grind on it and everything. And so I fired up. I went to fire the welder up. The welder wouldn't start. The battery was kind of dead on it. So... I hooked the jumper cable up to it, and I sat there for a few minutes, let it charge up, and I went and jumped up on the back of the truck, and I hit the starter thing there, and it went zoop, 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 and took right off nice and nice, and then it went bang, 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 pop, 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 clunk, 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 and died, and I'm like, what the hell was that? Cause it didn't sound like a, it blew up or anything. I, what the hell is that racket all about, right? I'm thinking, oh no, you know. I thought maybe the coupler between the, oh, I don't even know what it has, like a Lovejoy coupler or something, you know? Uh, between the welder generator part and the engine must have come apart or something. I couldn't tell, I just heard this horrendous racket. So I hurried up, and, you know, well, I didn't even shut it off. It just, you know, so I'm jumping around, I'm like, what the hell is this, right? So I get looking around, I'm looking around, right? I hit the starter again to see what it is. It's like, clunk, 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 clunk. I'm like, what the hell did it do, scatter? Well, you're not going to believe this. And just, I can't believe the stupid shit that happens. It just, uh, it blows my mind. The, it wasn't strapped in the back of the truck. And what it had done, it slid forward enough in the fuel tank 
the transfer tank, there was actually an old uh, log truck sign, an old particle board log, log truck sign in there. And uh, it was all faded anyway. But anyway, it was in there. So it, what it did is it pushed against that. Right up against that and the tank, right? And it mushed the recoil cover. It doesn't have a, a pull starter. It's electric start. But where the where the pull starter would be on it, on it, <coughs> It's got that little cover in there and a dust cover and whatever, and, you know, and it pushed in on that enough that when it spun over, it must have broke the little fingers that hold the uh, that dust cover on, and they went in there and tore all the fins off the flywheel, and then the fins, the hunks of little aluminum fins, must have jammed between the flywheel and the motostat, the uh, motoplat, whatever you call that, the coil, and the fields on the little coil, and it broke that completely off, right? So I'm like, what the hell? So I figured it out, I, I pulled it back away from the thing when I figured out what, you know, I was like, that's what happened, you know? So I took it up, I, I ended up, uh, Clyde and uh, Mitch dropped it off yesterday morning. At uh, furlong service and clearing a guy I deal with, and I, I don't, I just don't have time to fix it. Marv's gone; he took off; he ain't around no more. So I got nobody in the shop, and I'm, you know, I just, I so I sent it up to Willie's. So Willie called me today, and he said, "You're not gonna like this." I said, "Well, what did you find out? Can you get the flywheel and the coil for it?" And everything? he says, "Well, yeah." He says, well, "I could do that." He says, "But uh, the blocks junk." I said, "What?" He said, "Yeah, the little mounts where the the where the um, coil and the coil field and all that bolts onto it, it cleaned the friggin' motor mount the block the little mounts right off the motor block, so the whole motor's junk. Isn't that a shame?" He said, "It's gonna cost you more to put that a motor, you know, to get another block and all that." He says, "And it is just junk the welder and get another one." So, yeah, that's like a thirty-five or a thirty-eight hundred dollar welder, and I destroyed it. I, can't believe it but whatever stupid 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 so what I was gonna say on here is if any of you guys have like a welder that the welder parts no good on you know I would buy the motor off you or if anybody knows I, I, I got I'll, I'll try and figure out what it is I know it's a Kohler V V in it's a little two-cylinder Kohler it's very similar to the ones in the lawnmowers, only it's a horizontal, you know, instead of a vertical shaft, it's a horizontal shaft motor. So I don't know if I could get one of them Ching Chang Joong motors that would be, you know, close. I could, you know, I'm sure they would have enough horsepower and all that uh, compatible, but I don't know, you know, I don't know if I can make it both up or not. I don't know. But if I could find one. I'd buy the motor, or you know, use motor and throw it on. Because I hate to throw the welder away. That thing's beautiful. I mean, it's it's just a nice old welder. I mean, it's it's not even that old. It's maybe 10 years old, but it works good. So whatever, just a bummer. But if any of you guys know, <clears throat> like exactly what I got for a motor there, I'll try and find a serial number and stuff off it or something. But most of you guys know what I'm talking about with that portable Lincoln welder would know or have a pretty good idea of what it is and it's probably it might be something a guy could put an Onan on some of them but I mean that Kohler motor is a good motor it runs it's that thing starts good it's always run good it just you know just piss me off ah, I gotta stop destroying stuff it's like you go through these spells, like every time I turn around, it just everything breaks. It's unbelievable. We put a we put a turbo, another turbo on that 2013 Pete without ASX Cummins in it. That piss poor excuse of a bucket of bolts. So we put another um, another um, turbo on it because the exhaust housing was all cracked on it. Put another turbo on it. Forty. Four or forty-two hundred dollar turbo. Put it on. He he made like two trips, like three hundred miles, and uh, 
it's, it's through a service code light calibrate turbo it started making some weird noise we'll hear the the uh, actuator because it's 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 a variable displacement turbo you know we can't just have a regular turbo that worked for 800 years now we have to have these all this computerized junk and this variable speed turbo and whatever so I guess it's so sensitive the guy actually the, the guy who did the reman on the turbo uh, turbo solutions they uh, very nice people he called me out of New Jersey today because I, I made the, a claim on it you know I bought it through common truck parts and they're they're good I mean they got right on it and they got back to me and this guy got back to me and thank you very much by the way John Ferry I think his name is out of New Jersey what a what a cool guy and what a top-notch outfit I mean so I had a nice conversation with him and he's he's like you know Cummins knows they've got all kind of problems with this piece of junk you know because it did just terrible I think they've worked them out some now but that 2013 2012 2013 2014s they were just terrible a terrible what a black eye on Cummins but anyway uh he thinks he says he's gonna he's he sent a uh, pickup tag and they're gonna air freight it air freight it back over to New Jersey and pull it all apart. He says we'll do this at no cost because we stand behind our product. I was surprised. It's that was a good. You don't get too much of that nowadays. Usually it's like what like coming just pound sand. Worry about it yourself. You know we got our money. That's about how they're. That's I guess I don't know. I can't believe it. But this dude actually is. You know, uh, I think it's Turbo Solutions. So he he was very nice, and he's gonna let me know. But they're gonna pull it apart. He thinks something went through it, and I'm like, man, dude, I just had this engine rebuilt. I, you know, we put uh, like a few months ago, we put a new uh, manifold on it, a new gasket, and the turbo had started to crack a little bit. And I got some Marnell cast rod and just, you know. We filled that and put it back. But it just, I don't know, too much heat, I guess. I don't know what it is. I don't know. I've talked to the bully dog people. They're not having troubles with these with anything, you know, like the program we did on it. And I don't know. It's just, it's weird. But um, anyway, we're trying to get to the bottom of that. But he, he was very good. He said he, he'd go, you know. The turbo didn't scatter or anything. It's just like this variable thing. He said that the, the, the thing can get like uh, carbon in the veins. They're so sensitive. And they'll, I guess, bind this variable displacement rod up or something. So it can't move. Whatever. So, but just, God, everything we do. Uh, you just got to do it 14 times. You can't, you just can't fix anything anymore. And just go to work. You got to monkey with it forever. I don't know. Again, simplicity. Huh? Hey, enough of my gripe. I figured maybe you guys would find that interesting. Um, maybe somebody's got some good ideas on that turbo, too. It's an N14, uh, not an N14, I'm sorry, ISX. 550 horse Cummins. And like I said, it's been nothing but a nightmare since we've had it. Uh, on and on and on and on. The other one, too, in the Kenworth. It's just too bad. The trucks are beautiful, but the engines. And, but yet, you know, we have, I bought that, uh, I've got that 2002 Eagle that we put together. Um, you know, I bought it cheap and, you know, the engine and tranny. I did everything in it. We put a uh, crate motor in it uh, from Cummins, ISX. And that's been wonderful. Never missed a lick. Runs beautiful. It's good on fuel. It gets about two miles more a gallon than those DEF ones. Um, a 1.6, I think. I don't know. Uh, it runs good. It starts good. It's it's been a beautiful motor. So it isn't the ISX Cummins motor. It's the government collusion cabal between uh, the EPA under the Obama administration and Cummins taking the super truck fund money and trying to cobble this stupid DEF system together and get it out at a certain date so they could get money out of it. That you know that whole spiel. If you don't, look it up, because I'm not BSing. That's what the problem is with these engines. They, it cooks them. The afterburn and the DEF, it just cooks them. So anyway, um, 
just food for thought. I don't know. I, I love you guys' comments and people come up with some good comments. And I, I was real worried about Bobby Goodson bought a bunch of trucks and they're nice and I wish him the absolute best. I just hope he doesn't have a lot of trouble with them. Supposedly they got it worked out on the newer models, but I'm just I'm heartbroken that Cummins wouldn't come back to the table and offer some of the customers that bought these things something. You know, throw us a few bones. My God. But anyway, I hope Bob has good luck with his. They're beautiful trucks, I mean, but I don't know, whatever. Okay, enough blabbling. I'll uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for all the new subs. Thanks for the, all of you old subs. Um, thanks for all the cool comments. The great comments. Um, thanks for all the love, man. And I uh, really appreciate it. It's a lot of fun. And, uh, don't, ooh, don't forget to check out uh, some of the other guys. Oh, there's a... A new kid I was going to give him a shout out. I was watching his stuff the other day. Um, oh, God, now I can't think of his name. Oh, God. Oh, it drives me nuts. I should have wrote it down. I'll figure it out when I give him a shout out. Um, he's out in Wisconsin. Is it Weaverton? Bill Weaverton or something like that? I don't know. I'll, I'll find out. I can't remember. But he's got some good... good uh, couple good little videos he's just getting going there so you know check him out i'll get his name i'm sorry i'm terrible i should but anyway okay i'll uh i'll talk to y'all later ta -ta, have a wonderful evening and uh don't do anything i wouldn't do and if you do name it after me <laughs>